Hi, my name is Jeremy Hopgood, and I'm the author of the QLab series of books through Routledge Press. Today I want to take you through QLab setup specifically for talking about how to do a quick and easy setup uh, for video. Um, so first and foremost, you want to open up your QLab workspace um, with an empty workspace. Um, and we can talk a little bit about this idea of how QLab works in terms of workspaces and queue lists. Um, so first, a workspace inside of QLab refers to everything inside of this window that you see here. Um, each individual workspace could have a series of different queue lists inside of it. Um, a queue list is just a collection of queues that you assemble to play back certain functions, whether that be sound or video um, or lighting or various different types of things. Um, your main queue list will be put inside of this window here. Um, and you could have a series of other queue lists inside of QLab as you set it up. Um, but that's probably enough for us to look at at this point. Moving forward, if I wanted to set up a workspace so that I could use video, um, first thing I'm going to do is go down here to the settings button, which is a little icon that looks like a gear. Um, if I click on that, it is going to open up a window for me that is my workspace settings. Any settings that I change inside of here will affect anything that happens for this particular workspace. Now it's not going to be a global change inside of QLab that will affect other workspaces. That's important to know. Um, so looking down the list, there's a few things that I'm going to set up for myself just to make my workflow go a little bit better. Um, first, if we look along the side here on the left, these are the series of different settings that we can have um, for different types of functions of QLab. And I'm going to start off with general. General settings are the, the types of settings that affect just your, um, your, your basic workflow inside of QLab. Um, for me, one of the things that I like to do is I turn off auto numbering inside of my workspace before I get started. Um, because a lot of times I'm, I'm skipping around inside of my queue list and if it's set to add things within a numeric sequence, sometimes it creates some weird numbering as you jump around. And I personally find it a little easier to just go ahead and turn off the auto numbering at the beginning. That means there is no numbering system that is established for your queues when you first put them in. Um, and you can go back in later and change that. There is actually a quick function for renumbering queues um, inside of QLab. Um, so that's what I tend to set up for my own settings here. Um, I'm next going to go into video because video is going to control the different types of um, video surfaces that I can attach to. Um, and different types of cameras that I might attach to within my video workspace. So automatically, QLab will create what is called a surface um, that is attached to any type of a video display you have attached to your system. Um, so because I'm at home and I have multiple monitors, um, you'll see that there are three surfaces that were auto-created for me based off of the displays that I have attached to my system. Um, and this is a default inside of QLab. So you can see the resolution of each one of these surfaces tells me this one is 1680 by 1050 and that there is one screen that is attached to it. Um, so this is what we would call a single screen surface. Um, a surface is a type of a patch that you have created in QLab to send video signals out to one or more screens that might be attached to your surface. Um, we can get into that a little bit later in another tutorial, um, but that's a, an important concept for you to understand. Um, so what I'm going to do is take a look at Surface 3 here that's created, and if I click the Edit button, it will open up 
another window here for me that shows this entire surface. Um, so I'm going to enlarge that just a little bit bigger so that you can see what it is that we're talking about here. Um, first off, every surface has a particular name to it. Um, it defaults to surface number one through however many you have plugged into your system. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just rename this one and call it um, Main Projector. Um, and once I press enter, it will rename that surface for me and that will always be known as main projector. So let's just say in this particular system, that's the only projector that I wanted to use. Um, you can see on the left side of the screen here, it shows me which screens are actually attached to this surface. So you could have a series of um, screens attached to one surface so that you are sending out content to multiple projectors or displays on your system. Um, over here on the right side, we can see what the actual uh, resolution of that surface is. Um, and then in the center here gives us the ability to control certain things um, like keystoning um, and various things like that that we'll get to a little bit later. Um, so I am going to go ahead here and say reset my control points so that I haven't changed any of that. Um, and I'm going to close this window. And when we go back to the patch, we can see that this name has been changed from surface three to main projector. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say done here. Keep in mind, I could rename any one of these, and it's a really good idea to rename your surfaces for something that you know what they are, like um, front projector or stage right projector, stage left, um, backstage, various things like that that make it really obvious for you to know what you're sending the signal to. And I'm gonna go ahead and say done here. Um, the other settings that I'm going to be concerned with in terms of my, my basic setup is I also want to look at queue templates. Um, queue templates are the way of basically setting preferences inside of QLab for the way that you would like your queues to function. Um, so first and foremost, I like to look at my group setting. Um, a group queue inside of QLab is kind of like a folder. If you create a group queue, you can insert many other types of queues inside of it. Um, and then that gives you this one queue that you can use as a, um, a placekeeper for other things that you might put inside of it. Um, but also, for those of you who are familiar with like how lighting works, it can be used sort of like a submaster in that everything that is contained inside of that one group could then be controlled by one um, start or a stop or a fade queue. So if you had, say, 15 queues running simultaneously inside of that group queue, you could stop just the one queue and then all of those other things would stop automatically. Um, so what I like to do with my group setting is I set it for a timeline mode which means that all queues inside of the group are going to start simultaneously. Um, and we can look into this a little bit later for um, what the different functions are, but there is timeline, which means everything starts simultaneously. There is start first child and enter into the group, which means the first queue inside of your group would go first, and then it would set up for the next one. Um, or there is um, a, a couple of other settings inside of there that we can look at. Um, I tend to think that timeline is a better way to look at these for the way that I work. You may find that it's, um, it's not the way that you like to work. Um, another queue template to look at would be video. Inside of video, this allows us to establish what are the, the settings for any video queue that you insert into your workspace. Um, so for me, um, I like to, inside of display and geometry, I can go ahead and preset what video surface I want every video queue to default to. And in this particular setting, let's just say 
that main projector is the only thing that I will be using. Um, so I want to go ahead and set that as my default, which means every video cue that I put in will automatically default to that one particular cue. Um, I am also going to change the mode to not be full surface, but I'm going to be custom geometry. And that means that it's going to allow me to change things like the scale and the rotation and the placement of any cue that I put inside of there. Instead of having to go through and select each individual cue um, and turn that on or turn that off. The other thing that I want to do is to make sure that my layer is set the way that I want. Inside of QLab, kind of like Photoshop, you can determine what layer you want things to go in. I typically go with top, meaning that every new cue that I add will be added on top of a cue that came previous to it. But you may find that this is something you need to change from cue to cue. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set my default opacity as 0%, which means that whenever I'm inserting a cue, it will be invisible when it's first put in. That's because I traditionally have um, any video that comes in, it fades in. Um, so like a, a fade from black, right? So if I set my opacity at zero, that means that the cue originally is going to come in um, as being invisible. Um, and then if I go to the, the cue template for a fade cue, I'm going to go ahead and in my fade cue, set my geometry to a 100% opacity. And that means that when I insert a fade cue, the default setting is going to be that it is fading in. So in other words, if I accept a, um, a video cue and then I click a fade cue to add that in, it will automatically be a fade in for me. Now, you may find that this is not the way that you want to have your cues set up. Um, and it can change from show to show depending on how you are using the function. But that's basically how I'm going to do this. And I'm going to click done. And now I will be set up for inserting any cues that I want to do beyond this point. 